All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Today, our topic is about news, news and politics, uh, but for sure, is going to be involved religion at the same time. Uh, all of us, we knew that you know, uh, USA and Iran are considered to be enemy since the Islamic Revolution in Iran where the mullahs of Iran, they took over the government. And since then, USA and Iran, they are not only not friends, they are totally an enemy. However, through more than 30, 36 years, or almost 40 years, USA could not do anything really useful to make the regime of Iran collapse. In fact, it was always doing what is wrong, which means they make them strong. USA, long time ago, they start sanctions on Iran, but the sanctions was very stupid and very naive, like airplane parts, car parts, uh, you know, machines. Those kind of sanctions actually made Iran richer, not poorer because that forced them to make it locally and that make the money stay indoor and even develop uh, a new uh, needs of manufacture so Iran became even a better country for manufacturing so we can say it was a stupid sanctions and a big failure to the stupidity of all the leaders of USA through the last 30 years few years ago Obama not only he left the sanctions but he gave all the money which Iran has before you know the king lose his authority the Shah of Iran and he gave the Iranian a lot of money in return he got nothing Two years ago, we have a new president. His name is Trump, and I'm sure all of you, you know about him because I know many people speak, I mean, listening to us from around the world. He did, uh, started a new sanctions, and this time the sanctions is about oil. Those sanctions are very and extremely important, and they are very harmful. Iran today almost going bankruptcy. But within two weeks from now, or let us say a maximum of one month, Iran will suffer the consequence of the sanctions of Trump. More than 80% of Iran income coming from oil. And now Trump, he is going to punish anyone who buy oil from Iran after the end of the coming month. Before Trump, he had the sanctions for the last few months, but he allowed a few countries to buy from Iran oil, like Greece, India, Turkey, and some other countries. And that made Iran survive. But he was not doing that as a favor to Iran. He was doing that for, let us say, countries. He don't want them to have a bad impact immediately because of the sanctions. Same time, he wanted to guarantee that the market will lift up the production of oil, preparing for the moment where Trump, he is going to close the faucet of Iran, which means soon, the market will miss a lot of oil and that's mean the price of oil is going to increase however trump supposedly is preparing for that day because he have him which mean usa which is number one producer of oil and saudi arabia and other countries they are going to increase their production for oil which mean they want to guarantee that oil production will not be impacted and the market will stay secure 
However, Iran now, because they are facing a consequence of the sanctions, something they never thought is going to happen, not even one day, they threaten to close Hormuz. Hormuz is what you see in the front of you on the screen. Is a few miles of water between Iran and other countries like uh, Oman and Emirat. And actually, simply, this Hormuz is almost the faucet, or let us say the gate door for all the Persian Gulf. In case you do not know, the Arab and the Persian, they are fighting over the name. In the map here, they are calling it the Persian Gulf. The Arab, they call it the Arabian Gulf. However, the truth is, it is the Persian Gulf. So it is not Arabian and never, never was Arabian. However, Iran now, because they are facing the sanctions, they said, well, if you are going to make us uh, not to be able to sell our oil, this is what we will do. We are going to close this area and we will not allow anyone to sell oil. If we cannot sell our oil, we are going to shut down this area. Which means they are threatening to have a war and they are going to use their air force in order to make such a thing happen. Now, if Iran decide to do that, I believe USA is going to have no choice except to hit Iranian forces directly. And if Iran do such a thing, actually, the impact of that will not be only on the oil, it's going to be in gas. When I mean here the propane. Qatar sell their propane gas or natural gas through this sea which means Qatar will not be able to sell anything and that means all the customers of Qatar who buy the natural gas from Qatar they will not be able to buy it and that means the price of gas will go skyrocketing same time Kuwait Kuwait which is as we see in the map this is Kuwait Kuwait is a big uh, energy and oil producer is going to have the same problem because Kuwait will not be able to sell their oil so we have Qatar we have Kuwait we have Emirat and Iran all they will not be able to sell their production abroad so that will going to have a huge uh, impact on the market around the world which means the price of oil will increase uh, in a dramatic way unless USA increase their production uh, a lot more than what they have and the Saudi they do the same and I think Trump he knew what he's doing and he knew where this is going to hit most likely Iran if they are going to lose all ability to sell oil they are going to close this area in the sea in the Persian Sea because they have nothing left to lose simply they are going bankrupt they cannot even pay the salary of their army they cannot even pay uh, for normal government functions this is no choice but war and Iran if they go in war they will make a big mistake because for sure they are no match for the enemies and the enemy here is not just USA the enemy is Saudi Arabia Emirat and uh, many other countries anyway USA alone is enough to to make uh, Iran pay heavily if they try even to use their weapon but having those 
sanctions and having neighbors who they are not friendly to Iran will make it extremely to Iran to survive so what is left for Iran to do production of oil is to send illegal production through the borders with Afghanistan but as we know Afghanistan here is under the control is still of USA so they cannot do that then what is left is to sell oil to Pakistan and Pakistan will not dare to do so because still Pakistan is under the command of USA and any sanction any uh, any shipment will go through Pakistan the USA will destroy it immediately the only market left for the Iranian to sell their oil is this area they can sell send their oil through Turkmenistan previous Soviet Union territory and they can sell to Azerbaijan this is Azerbaijan and they can use the sea or they can go through the borders and sell oil to Turkey and now Erdogan he is doing his best trying to convince Trump not to include Turkey in the sanctions because Turkey is literally collapsing too and the Iranian oil is making the Turkish breathe so they need it badly and now Erdogan is trying to negotiate with the Trump so he might be merciful and let the Turkish live now I believe Trump is smarter than this and he will not let the Turkish take advantage of this because if he did not forbid all borders from taking oil from Iran the sanction is useless because Turkey what will do the Turkish always you know the Turkish government I'm talking about Erdogan not about the people he is a thief and he is like uh, a fox who take advantage of people around him so now Iran need to sell their oil Erdogan he will do what he did from in Syria in Syria uh, the Isis they have control of the oil fields in those areas and Erdogan was the only market for them where they can sell their oil and Erdogan was taking advantage of that to the point they were selling the barrel of oil for him for five dollars and yet Erdogan he said it for 50 or 60 so Turkey made it trillions of dollars not billions only from during the war in Syria stealing the oil of Syria sponsoring Isis by buying their oil and Turkey now is taking advantage of the sections on Iran because Iran is going to have no choice but to smuggle their oil through Turkey and I believe even if they have sanctions still the Iranian they will smuggle a lot of oil to Turkey but that will be limited compared to the size they want to sell which means they will not be able to sell much now we go furthermore to see what does the impact is going to be on those sanctions in Iran on Hezbollah Hezbollah is not a political party it's a terrorist group some liberals in the West they call them uh, resistance the fact they are nothing but terrorists they are the same as Isis Hezbollah they bent in all the money they have mostly either in selling drugs or in the support of Iran so Hezbollah controlled that area in the south of Lebanon and now for the first time the head of Hezbollah Nasrallah he asked the members of Hezbollah to make donation to the party his party 
that's never happened before because they got a lot of money coming from Iran like rain without even count but now because they need the money badly and Iran cannot pay no more they cannot even pay the salary for their own soldiers so how they can pay for Hezbollah so look now what a Trump he did Trump he is squeezing the tie around the neck of the mullahs of Iran but by squeezing Iran he squeezed terrorist groups like Hezbollah and who else what about the terrorist group of Hamas Hamas is sponsored by Iran too so now Hamas have to find a new sponsor a new daddy who will give them the money or oh, let us see Hamas is here this is Gaza so now Hezbollah and Hamas they are losing their fund and they will suffer badly who else the regime in Syria the regime in Syria is suffering badly right now to the point they cannot even afford to have gas in the street for cars because before they used to be able to have a line of money coming from Iran to pay for many things the Syrian government they need but now when Iran themselves cannot afford anything so the Syrian government is suffering badly so look what a Trump he did if we zoom out in the map we will find that the plan of Trump it's beyond local and beyond Iran then we go and we will find another countries have will have impact because of Iran like who maybe you will not believe that will go to South America in South America we have Venezuela Venezuela became a terrorist camp for Hezbollah in fact the vice president of the president of Venezuela he is a Muslim and he is a member of Hezbollah you believe it or not so now Iran cannot sponsor Maduro who is sponsoring Iran in their terrorism and he made Venezuela a terrorist camp Venezuela they have oil yes but what the benefit they cannot sell it the country is collapsing the government is collapsing but they used to get a lot of money from Iran and this is why actually the Iranian they were hoping that the coming president after Maduro is going to be a Hezbollah member who is now the vice president of of, of, uh, of Venezuela so uh, imagine the plan of Iran how far it goes a country like Venezuela is going to be under total total control of Iran so now by the sanctions on Iran Trump not only he did hit two birds three birds he hit them all all his enemies they are going to suffer badly I see Trump as a very like let us say he is a very uh, smart when it's come to money and business and this is what happened exactly here this guy he have a brain of a businessman and his brain of a businessman and his experience he used to always to compete with many 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 people who want to compete with him in his business and this is nothing but a plan of compete how we can compete and how we can use our power and USA is super powerful to the point no one dare not even China dare to break the sanctions which is USA saying I'm going to put it because the sanctions by the way it doesn't force anyone to do anything I mean you don't need to obey USA you can still buy from Iran if you wish but then USA will have sanctions in your business which means they will not buy from you and they will punish any company by not allowing them to do business in USA if they do business with you 
and nobody will risk to do business with Iran you know just to do business with Iran they want to risk doing business with USA Iran economy is nothing compared to USA actually all the Middle East economy is nothing to compare to USA maybe some of you do not know that what uh, 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 the money land every day in the ports of New York is more than all the GDP of income of all this area including Israel just in the port of New York alone so uh, Trump he knew what he's doing he knew how powerful his country is and he is not the same as a pr the previous president who they are just as chip it in the office who do not know what to do this guy he threat and he do and they learn that this guy is not joking so nobody can ignore him if he say I'm going to do that he he, he go and he do it so now all his enemies they frighten when they hear him saying I'm going to do that or what you need to do just post a tweet as an example just uh, Trump yesterday he said I am going to ask OPEC to increase to decrease the price of oil today they decrease it that's it I mean this guy did not meet with anyone he just posted Twitter this is how much he is scaring them Turkey each time Trump he post a tweet about Turkey the Turkish they lose a lot of value of their money this guy he knew what he's doing just one tweet one tweet the Turkish currency lost 40% of the value you believe it so if Trump he made 10, 10 tweet Turkey became shish kebab as they say hummus this is why Erdogan you see Erdogan is like a turkey you not know, turkey the bird not turkey the Turkish turkey like turkey he have a, like a too many feather and he is so uh, proud he makes speeches but he's a potato in front of Trump we will reject we will do this is what he's saying in front of public this is just for marketing you know it's a for elections and stupidity but in reality he is just a little puppy and Erdogan is terrified that Trump he is going to punish Turkey next and I hope he will do because Turkey is number one sponsor to Isis and all the fighters of Isis came from Turkey I don't mean they are Turkish I mean through Turkey and there's no way that Erdogan and his intelligence and his army who they are controlling the borders with Syria they do not know that somebody is coming from China going to Syria in the time of a civil war he is not coming for a vacation obviously he is coming to join Isis or Al-Qaeda and until now actually Erdogan is protecting Al-Qaeda in this in the north of Syria in this territory here this territory here is controlled by Al-Qaeda and Erdogan he is the one who protect them and he is the one who armed them same as he was protecting in this area in the north Isis for many years using them as a source of income and money and not only that the the regime of Turkey is the biggest thief in history the city here you see it's called Aleppo this city Erdogan he stole all the manufacture this is a huge city for manufacture in Syria all the machines all the cars all the trucks gone to Turkey everything they are ripped off the city people they left the city because of the war Erdogan militant and mafia they are ripped off the city ISIS took over Erdogan he took the oil from them ISIS cannot sell the oil to Iraq they are their enemy they can't sell the, 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 the oil to anyone the only regime who is a mafia regime is Turkey so the Turkish need to be punished and I'm talking here about the Turkish government for all the crimes they did in this area the crimes against the Yazidi the Christian the Armenian and the Syrian and whoever been hurt and damaged by the crimes of Isis same time today the USA Embassy they released in Baghdad 
an article exposing a lot of scandals and a lot of money laundry done by the highest mullah of Iran. He is the biggest mullah. He is like the person who present Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. And in this article, they gave numbers that this person he have in his pocket no less than 20 billion dollar imagine while while iran is collapsing and people they cannot afford to buy bread the mullah he have in his pocket more than 20 billion dollar so uh what will happen next i believe in the coming a few weeks things is going to get so hot if trump did not allow turkey to have to be uh, bur burdened from the sanction if a trump cut all the sanctions and look like this is what he would do all all the all the country like he gave exception for some countries to buy from iran iran have no choice except to try their muscles to see if they can play with trump and they will try to close this area here in order to close all the oil and gas supply from Kuwait, from Qatar, from Emirat. Then, if this has happened, the solution is very easy for USA. In Qatar, USA have a huge base, army base, which is very close to this area. So, USA, um, you know, army, and Marines and Navy will not even take them two seconds to make a strike against the Iranian if they try to play that game. Same time, the Iranian, if they try to launch missiles against the American base in Qatar, that will be the end of the regime of Iran because all of us, we knew that Iran and Trump is not the same as, uh, as Obama, you know, they can play the game with Obama. Obama is a potato. This guy, he will wipe the Iranian government from the top of the earth. And he will, you know, he will not hesitate to use whatever he have in his hand to destroy what is called the, the, the Revolution Guard, which is nothing but a, a terrorist group. So we will see what will happen in the coming uh, uh, few weeks uh, about this. And I hope Trump, he will be strong and he will continue in his sanctions. So, because that will have an impact in many. Iran is a, is, is a head of a snake. Iran and Qatar, both are a head of a snake. I hope soon he will do something to Qatar too. Both of them, they are the head of a snake. This country is the one who provide ISIS and Al-Qaeda with money. And he is the one who sponsor uh, Turkey with a lot of money to protect Erdogan from collapsing. And now this guy, the Prince of Qatar, he is the one who is sponsoring the terrorists in Libya. So if Trump, he finished with Iran, and he was able to change the Iranian regime, that will have a huge impact in all the Middle East. And we will see what will happen. Now here you notice that the war involve Shia and Sunni. Shia and Sunni, they hate each other to death. So the competition here is not between USA and uh, Iran. Actually, the Muslim Sunni they are praying that Trump he is going to attack Iran because Iran is a Shia country and they believe that the Shia is their number one enemy in the world. All right. Now, uh, Saudi Arabia as a country which is afraid that Iran is getting expanded and became so strong, they will be happy to see those sanctions are successful because 
after three years in war in your in Yemen where al Houthi I don't know how many of you knows who was al Houthi al Houthi is uh, a leader of a Shia group sponsored by Iran so al Houthi who is exist in this area uh, he took over the capital and they took over the government and they even hit through the borders to Saudi Arabia and actually in some time we are able to be successful to go inside the border of Saudi Arabia and attack cities like Jizan or the borders of Jizan and Saudi Arabia and Emirat they send armed forces to sponsor the local Yemeni in this side of Yemen let us make this one in different color in order to stop al Houthi from taking over Yemen because if that happened that means Saudi Arabia is going to be surrounded by Shia countries for those who do not know Shia are not only exist in uh, Yemen and Iran or uh, south of Lebanon Oman the country of Oman they are not really um, I don't know how to describe them for you but they are like they are a branch of the Shia so you can say Oman belong to the Shia so look what we have here Oman is a kind of kind of Shia is like a, a uh, a sect of the Shia so now if Iran through the Shia took over all of Yemen so now Saudi Arabia is surrounded from two countries by two Shia countries but what does that mean that mean if if Saudi Arabia wanted to sell oil the Shia they can close this sanction here this area as you see in the screen the same as Iran can control the sea here it's a lot even easier it's like maybe three miles water wide so the Shia in here in Yemen they can stop all the supply of Saudi Arabia to go through the sea and that mean that Saudi Arabia will collapse if such a thing happen so this war is bigger than just uh, Iran and you know it is it is uh, it's having impact in everything around you Iran right now is sponsoring uh, the government uh, you remember I made a video before about Haftar which is a general in the previous army of al Qazafi, and he is fighting the capital now the capital the government of the capital is nothing but Isis and Al-Qaeda and Muslims Brotherhood sponsored by Iran and Qatar so now uh, Saudi Arabia Egypt let us make the screen bigger and let us give more landmark Saudi Arabia Egypt and Emirat and Bahrain which is a small tiny island here uh, they are a team fighting against Qatar let us change the color Qatar Iran Syria Hezbollah Muslims Brotherhood and al Houthi in Yemen. Each one of them is trying to, let us say, uh, hold the neck of the other one and make him to stop from breathing. So the competition is who is going to be successful to make the other one drown before he himself he die. All right. So uh, I, I just wanted uh, to to explain to you what's happening, um, and I believe that coming a few weeks, by the end of this coming month, things will become so interesting, um, and it might go 
uh, it might go for war as I said because Iran does not have to make choices the Iranian government if they don't do something uh, they, they will collapse and actually I pray that the Iranian government will collapse in the best scenario the Iranian government they will start asking Trump for negotiation and maybe Trump he is trying to force them to do that negotiation and the negotiation will be very simple don't ever play out your off out of your borders they have to stop sponsoring Hezbollah Hamas and all terrorist groups around the world so in either way Trump is winning and Iran is going to lose and if Iran try to close this area here then they have to face a very huge consequence because even China will not accept because China they are buying oil from this area so it's not going to be the, for the benefit of China the Chinese will not allow Iran to do that so that they will not only face uh, like problem with USA the whole world will go against them because this is a this territory is a big market for uh, gas and oil uh, you know natural gas etc so it's going to be very important and very very interesting and we will see what we uh, what will happen in the coming two months now I see like uh, some Muslims in the chat you know make their comment and very they are very funny as usual but here you notice how Muslims are fighting Muslims uh, Qatar as an example the the, the 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 Prince of Qatar he is a Muslim Sunni but because they are Muslim Brotherhood Muslim Brotherhood they have no friends they say in the Middle East whoever marry my mom I call him daddy the Prince of Qatar is the same he is a Muslim Brotherhood so because now Saudi Arabia have sanctions on, uh, on Qatar and Emirates they have sanctions on Qatar and Bahrain they have sanctions on Qatar Qatar they have no friends left so they have Iran is the only friend to friend with so now Iran is the daddy of the Prince of Qatar who is sleeping with his mother so he called him daddy so now if Iran lost the Prince of Qatar he will be humiliated same as Erdogan this is why uh, Erdogan uh, uh, and the Prince of Qatar they are doing their, their the best they can to put pressure on Trump in order to stop him from doing his plan but I don't think they will be successful they are too little to be able to put uh, pressure on Trump yeah Qatar is a Sunni but because they are Muslim Brotherhood Muslim Brotherhood they have as I just I just said Muslim Brotherhood they are Sunni but Muslim Brotherhood they are for sale you know they are uh, uh, Muslim Brotherhood is like uh, like the like the harlot of Islam you want to sleep with her just you know, and, and, and pay they are his welcome you know so Muslim Brotherhood they have no dignity they don't have an honor they don't have you know they are they are willing to sell Allah and Muhammad and etc just for the sake of successful and take over government so they are willing to take partners even with the devil it doesn't matter you know because they are the devil uh, so yes they are Sunni but because it's a Muslim Brotherhood everything is possible all right like uh, Hamas is Sunni too but Hamas is a Muslim Brotherhood so how the Sunni Hamas they take money from uh, from Iran the answer is very simple they are Muslim Brotherhood do you understand Hamas is a Muslim Brotherhood and because they are Muslim Brotherhood Hamas will come Iran to sponsor them they don't have they don't have a, like a, let us say a, a, I don't know what what to to to, to say. Uh, like their dignity is for sale. They don't have a dignity. They don't have a, a red line. Everything is possible. In order to take over government and to 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 be succeed to stay exist, they are willing to to do anything. All right. So yeah, they don't have loyalty to their sect as Muslim Sunni. They have loyalty to whoever whoever pay. 
whoever paying is welcome you know they work for anyone so uh, uh, and they are like a snake you know they don't they don't uh, uh, they don't have uh, the honor of like this is not, this is like you see uh, like even in Islam Islam as an as a, as a cult uh, suppose there's things you cannot do right like there's things it's forbidden to do the Muslim Brotherhood they don't care for that they don't care how they can do things they don't care as an example the Prince of Qatar in a Jazeera day and night he speak about Islam and speak about those who be betray uh, the, 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 the Islamic countries and the King of Saudi Arabia he is a friend of the American but the hypocrite the Prince of Qatar he gave almost 15% of Qatar to be a base for the American so he lecture the people about Islam day and night, but the Quran says in chapter 5, verse 51, take not Christians and Jews as a friends, and the one who take them is one of them. This is what the Muslim Brotherhood are. They make speeches, everything they do supposedly is about Islam, but in reality, they don't care for a second about Islam. They care about how they can accomplish a Muslim Brotherhood empire. Do you understand me? And I'm sure the, the members of Muslim Brotherhood in the chat, they will be upset. And the one who will have a great benefit for all what's happening, number one, is going to be Israel. So number one person in history of Israel, nobody helped Israel this as much as a Trump. This guy, he did a lot of things. To, you see, uh, 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 the Israeli they should make him a president to Israel because nobody did to them nobody helped Israel as much as Trump he did look what he is doing to Iran while Obama and George Bush and all the stupid president before him they have the same tools they have the same power but they, they cannot they don't know how to use it and they have no idea how to do things this guy he just he took office two years ago and look what he did it's not even complete two years uh, so so Trump is a very smart man when it's come to to do the, the tricks of economy and the tricks of economy they can be more harmful than war he did not go in war he did not say nobody can say now Trump is a uh, is causing war no because simply he, he just to practice his uh, right as an american president uh we don't want to do business with them and anyone want to do business with them he cannot do business with us that's all he is not you know he is not doing any violence so it he did it in a very smart intelligent way if you go and attack iran directly then they will say okay he started a war but he did not do that he is smarter than them all right uh, Islam was never built on money like the Roman did to Christians by changing the message into paganism. Uh, Burhan, you are number one pagan, my friend. Isn't it your prophet who kissed the black stone? Isn't it you Muslims, you kiss the black stone, you go around the stone, you pray in the front of a stone, you worship from the end of the world in the direction of a stone, and then you are talking about paganism? You are the pagan. I mean, look who's talking, and the black stone is in the shape of a vagina. I mean, I wish the shape is different. At least make it like in a, in, in a, in a shape of a Santa Claus. I mean, what's wrong with you? You're talking about paganism, and you are kissing a stone, and you put your head inside a vagina? You could not find something different to say? You are the pagan. Isn't it your prophet, he said, whoever touched the black stone and the Yemeni corner, they erase his sin? You are a pagan person. You believe that stones, they erase your sin. Since when stones erase your sin, Abdul? What, what happened to this guy? He is dead now. He is playing dead. Do you want me to show you the reference? You need money to live. Don't get me wrong. And no, no, no. You're a prophet. He made verses in the Quran that Allah himself, he need a mortgage. Your prophet was begging for money and he made Islam based on money. He gave 
Abu Sufyan, a war warrior, 100 camels for each one of him and his family. Is that true? He bought their hearts. So you're a prophet. The only religion you can buy believers is Islam. I challenge you to say I'm lying. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a religion? You can pay somebody to convert to it? Pagan. This is a pagan religion. They cannot make you believe. It's not convincing, so we will pay you. Just convert. And this is in the Quran. Right? So it's very funny when a Muslim he speak about the stone was built by Abraham. He used to worship there. So it, look, look how stupid the answer is. Guys, the stone was built by... Have you ever heard of a stone built? A stone is a stone. How you, how somebody can build a stone? Secondly, if Abraham or anyone he built a stone or he put a stone, who is Abraham? He's a man. Why you kiss it? Is Abraham a god? And how Abraham he went to the Kaaba? I mean, what's wrong with you? Even even your book says that Abraham is not the one who built the Kaaba. It says Abraham he rebuilt the Kaaba. He don't even know. Like, even when they want to lie, they do not know how to lie. According to Islam, Allah, he sent the black stone. It's not Abraham, you idiot. And the black stone was white, and the sin of mankind make it black because your prophet is racist. So sin make you black. So next time, at least if you want to, uh, to lie, go and search Google. What pictures? You want to show you pictures? Anyway, we wanted to talk about Iran, but this guy, look what he want to take us. We will take a break for a second. Let us show you the picture of the black stone. Hold on. Just to make him happy. Pictures. Hmm. <clears throat> now you will cry when you see it. What is this? Huh? What is this? Isn't it this is a vagina? Am I fabricating things? Are you there, Abdul? Is this a vagina? What is this? You put your head there and you kiss it? And you want to convince us that this is a stone sent by Allah? So, even your tafsir says, your interpretation for the Quran says that this is a stone was worshipped by the Arab before Islam, and women they used to touch their vagina and they place their hand when they have their period inside this vagina because this is the god of fertility. This is the vagina blessed by Baal, the god of fertility. And then the men after that, they come and they put their penis inside that vagina, praying to Allah so he might make the women fertilize. Am I lying? And not only that, guys, do you know that the black stone need maintenance? I mean, Allah, he sent it to the Muslims, but he could not protect it. They have to do maintenance. There's no black stone left. There's a small, small tiny stones are left of the black stone. Look at this here. And this is a picture. They are putting wax. All, all what you see inside, there's no stone. The stone is gone. They are putting wax. There's a small tiny stones. So Allah, he sent the stone, it's a holy stone. How come Allah could not protect the stone to stay stone? So now we have what we have left is eight pieces. Each one of them in the size of your finger. The guy here, he is putting wax to fix the stones. Each In every two days, three days, they have to do this, uh, this procedure. Holy stone, Allah cannot protect the holy stone. 
right? And then they give you they give you speeches about paganism. Right? Maybe there's nobody pagan as you. You pray in front of a stone. You bow down in front of a stone. You go around the stone. All your religion is based on a stone. We don't kiss the stones, and we don't believe the stones are holy. Look, they are fighting over the stone. Look at this. Like they are dying to kiss the stone. I don't want. I want. I want to kiss it. I want to lick it. It's a vagina. It is a vagina. You like it. You don't like it. This is the fact. Look here. This is like a here. This, the the picture here they are showing you. But actually, the they they make it too big. The stones are even smaller. Do you see what is inside the stone? There's nothing. There's no stone in the stone. When you talk about pagan, why do somebody told you the Christians they kiss stones? Show me where in my show me where Jesus he kissed a stone. I can show you where your prophet he kissed the stones. I follow Jesus, I don't follow any man. If somebody is a stupid kissing stone, this is his business. Your prophet was a pagan man, obviously. And this is nothing but a vagina. Anyway, brother, if you want to go and kiss the stone like this guy, the policeman there, he will help you, brother. Anyone knows why they have a police next to the stone? Because they are afraid that somebody will pick them up and take them from the walks. There's no stones, it's just a small piece. You can take like a, for a fork with you and push it up and you put it in your pocket. And then you say it in eBay. That's why they have police all over. They want to be sure you kiss it, you did not swallow it. What if a guy, he put his tongue and he swallowed it out, the black stone, the small stone. Then he take it and he put it in eBay for, God knows, for a hundred million dollars. I'm telling you because they want to protect the, the, the little tiny stones from being stolen. There's no stone, it's gone. There's wax. They are kissing the wax. Pagan people. Anyway, this guy, he changed our topic. Our topic is about pagan is idol. You no, know, pagan is anything, anything, anything you, 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 you do act of worship except God. This is what pagan is. And it's black stone, even your prophet, he claimed that the black stone is going to have eyes and ears and a tongue in the judgment day. And it's going to witness for you. This is what paganism is. And you are a pagan. Anyway, we go back to our topic. This guy, he took us out of our topic. So in a month or two from now, remind me, guys, about what will happen in Iran. Do you think Iran is going to block this section sanction here? And they are going to cause uh, uh, an oil impact short of oil from all those countries who they are oil producer do you think uh, USA is going to attack immediately uh, do you think uh, Iran will have no choice but to have a war because there's nothing left to to risk and if that happen what is next I believe that if Iran do such a thing is going to be the end of the Iranian regime, especially if USA and China, because China need the oil in this area. And I don't think they will allow Iran to close that sanction. So it's going to be a big problem for Iran if they try, because everybody will turn against them, for everybody is buying from this area oil. India, their neighbor India, their neighbor Pakistan, their neighbor, everybody is buying oil from here. So. If you close it on them, you will face war with everybody, and Iran will face a very bad consequence. Already, they are not qualified to go against America. So imagine what would happen if everybody go around uh, against them. Uh, Iran will buy two submarines from Trump. You see, uh, actually, Iran they have a submarine, I think, already. You see the Iranian they are building a huge uh, I, I saw a video they have tunnel on the ground they have a lot of missiles but that will not help them you see 
in the time of war those stupid toys they are toys you see this is what happened to Saddam Hussein Saddam Hussein he was a threatening US saying we have and we have and we have and when the war happened the USA army took over it was inside Baghdad in less than 48 hours they will not even let you use them whatever you have toys there you, do you think they will, he will be able to use them they will not even let them touch their faces so if the Iranian decide to go in war the American they will destroy their weapon and they will bury it before even they touch it I'm very sure they knew where they hide it they knew where it is and they knew what it is so I don't think they will be able to do so anyway for me I don't like war I don't favor war because at the end of the day in Iran there's people who will suffer and uh, you know I uh, I agree that the Iranian government is evil it is disgusting it's a terrorist or uh, a government uh, so I I hope that the Iranian government will collapse by the inside revolution the Iranian when they see uh, that this government cannot do what what they uh, I mean you see when you, a citizen as long he have food at the table he don't go crazy so when the Iranian they go hungry that when the revolution come and there's no army can stop it there's no uh, revolution guard Islamic guard nobody can stop a hungry nation from taking over so I hope the Iranian will take over and they will get rid of this regime which is become more evil because they are practicing Islam Islam is a problem and any country will adopt Islam as a, as a way of life this country will become evil just a few days ago the Saudi they execute and crucified 37 people I mean look how evil life and torture of a human being have no value that is Islam crucifixion in the year 2019 ISIS did the crucifixion in the year 2019 because simply this is what is written in the Quran the Quran says those who do etc and etc you crucify them you cut their hands and their feet and Muhammad he did that exactly Islam is a religion of torture no mercy uh, uh, horror terror and uh, uh, it's against a human right in Iran until now when Ahmed Najad he went to the uh, United Nations he said in Iran we have zero gays we have zero atheists have you ever heard of a country where where we can find zero gays and zero atheists only in two countries in the world Iran and Saudi Arabia you know why because Islam practiced terror you cannot speak your mind you cannot be who you what you want to be the second you say I want to be an atheist they will execute you this is the truth otherwise I never heard of any country have zero gays and zero atheists it's impossible everybody is a Muslim everybody believer <laughs> this is what terrorism does this is what terrorism does uh, let us see what will happen and I hope you guys you did like this video don't forget to give a like and share and the video will not stay there for long if you'd like to download it for free as you know I don't keep my videos and if there is any Muslim would like to join us later when we go live on air maybe you can call us and we will have a live uh, uh, discussion with you about the cult of Islam you are more than welcome uh, for sure we are against Islam but we are not against Muslims we believe Muslims are a human being like us and they need our help so they might understand what is best for them and they can if we are wrong they can correct us you know you, uh, do your best to correct us if we are wrong why not I mean uh, it's possible that somebody you are not always right so I will be happy to see Muslims correcting us if they can do but I never saw that happening yet so I want to say thank you for being here and I will try maybe uh, today I mean after a few hours from now to go again live on air we will see uh, and for those who celebrate the Easter according to the Orthodox calendar uh, remember uh, there will be a live stream in Jerusalem uh, you can search for it where the light will come from the empty uh, tomb of Christ 
so you can search for it and you can see the amazing miracle which happened every year for the last 2000 years this is why I consider the Eastern calendar is better and more accurate for the Easter from the Western calendar and the reason I, I, I believe in that because this miracle happened according to the Eastern Orthodox calendar so watch it see it it's amazing it's it's beautiful and it is a proof of the living God it's a proof people can witness if you don't believe you can go and fly to Jerusalem and witness it by your own eyes you do not need to see it in YouTube this is not a trick this is not a trick even the Jews in Jerusalem they went there the police they are there nobody can say it's a trick it is real it's a miracle it's a beautiful miracle so my friend go and uh, watch it and share with your friends and for those who celebrate the Easter according to the Orthodox um, I wish you the best and he is risen long time ago and we celebrate his day every day the day of the Lord is every day and that is called Sabbath Sabbath by the way is not Saturday Sabbath is every day you designate for the name of the Lord and my days every day of my life is Sabbath so I have seven days a week Sabbath because every day in the week I serve the Lord and the Lord is my witness thank you very much for being here may the Lord bless you until we see you again soon Christ is Lord and Islam is false thank you very much take care